Hey guys, we're here live for the Time Massage Jam. I hope you guys have a partner you can work with. These are really designed for you to be able to work with us. Uh, though we appreciate it if you, you know, just watch these. We really want you to work with your partner, loved ones, friend, family, colleagues, just to learn a little give and share sequence. Tonight we're gonna go over neck work and then the face. I don't talk about like face massage a lot, but it's really, really good for people. And we're in a situation where you've got uh, tons of musculature in the face. And just to give you an idea, I'm going to flip up and I go over every little muscle. You don't need to remember this or memorize it, but you're dealing with tons of muscle through the face that deal with uh, facial expression. And one of the muscles that I wanted to deal with very specifically that people have problems with that I think of more as a, a muscle of mastication of chewing, but of the face is temporalis. Uh, temporalis is up right around the temples. And a lot of people who have headaches, uh, cases of bruxism, grinding their teeth, things like that. I love uh, scalp massage. I have long hair, so it tends to pull on my scalp. So receiving like a nice scalp massage that addresses temporalis is really, really great. Just so you get an idea, you know, we'll, we'll go over a little bit of specificity, like a few muscles in the neck but you're also dealing with just inordinately complex structures. Primarily what you're going to do is if you see the sternocleidomastoid right there on the left, you want to stay posterior or behind that muscle. If you go in front of that muscle, you hit the carotid artery. And generally not a good idea to press on people's carotid arteries unless you were doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and you're well trained with an instructor. <laughs> No, no carotid artery. So it's not the front, it's the side and then the, the posterior, the stuff in the back. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and give uh, first. I'm going to have Kristen just lay down on her side. Typically what you'll have the person do is put the problem side up. And I'm going to take one of my blankets so I can bolster her. This is going to make it easier for her to relax through her hips. I made like a, a round with my bolsters here. And then we're going to have one leg up and over. How's that? Good. Got enough support there? Yeah. Come cool. So just to open this up, dealing with the neck, I feel like we're also dealing with the upper back. You can't really address one area of the body without getting into both over time. So one of the areas we want to address first is the levator scapula and the trapezius. Levator scapula, it elevates the shoulder blade. It elevates the scapula it lifts the shoulder blade. But is that an upper back muscle or is that a neck muscle? Do you see the distinction between the two? And then on the trapezius, you have an upper, I think a middle and then a lower portion. The upper portion is what we wanna deal with by being able to lengthen both levator scapula and the trapezius. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna come in and I'm gonna sit. So I'm gonna make sure my microphone is out of the way there. Oh. And I wanna be able to sit right next to Kristen. I actually don't want to maintain this space. This feels very disconnected. This is not nearly as nurturing, not nearly as fun, not nearly as effective as if I scoot in so that I can actually press against her. And what that's going to allow is I'm able to wrap my arm around, get this nice little handle over the shoulder, And what I want to do is kind of lean down because I want to pull open that levator scapula and trapezius. You see how low and slow that was? That was one pass. We're going to do this progressively. As I lean back, low and slow. How you doing there, Kristen? Good. I can see your face. You look like you're doing okay. Doing okay. So I'm, I'm leaning down, but I'm also leaning back at the same time, pulling that back and open, leaning back, opening the neck. You see all that head and neck movement? Just because I'm not pressing here doesn't mean it's not effective there. I'm pulling to be able to lengthen that area. So when I lean back, pulls down, pulls down, pulls down, pulls down right in there. It's 
It's like I'm trying to get her to let me have her shoulder blade. So I can move this around, open it up. And I'll go for another pass. There we go. And from right here, you can see that her head is a little bit back. I want to create a little more space, a little more length on these posterior neck muscles. I'm going to bring her head forward and then bring her arm to her side comfortably so she can stack. I'm trying to create some open space here because I want to be able to get into this section of the neck. Do you see how I'm at either the side or to the posterior? This is the meat. This is where I can press right in there. Now we're getting general neck muscles, but what I really want to focus on and kind of get into is semispinalis capitis. There's also splenius capitis, by the way, and the suboccipitals. Do you see how from this side position, I'm going to be able to compress those? This is going to be pretty effortless. It's really, really amazing neck work. And then Kristen, do you need a little more head support or are you good how you are? I'm fine. Okay. Thank you. Sometimes if you have a pillow and it's extremely squishy, they'll, they'll go from like their heads at neutral to like it's craned over and you don't necessarily want that. No. What I do want you to do is just communicate with the receiver, ask them for feedback on what you're doing and how it feels as we go. So I'm going to change my body position because I want to be able to come in and I want to be able to sit comfortably. I'm going to get this passive kind of receptive hand under my thigh. And then I'm going to come in and start to lean down. You see how I can kind of pull the, the shoulder down. I want to create a little space, but I'm pressing very clearly in the posterior, in the back, even though from this angle, it looks like I'm up and going straight down. I'm definitely in the posterior, leaning to the back, hitting those muscles. Ooh. And what other muscles? Oh, levator scapula and trapezius right up through there. Now, if I want more pressure, I could stack my shoulder above my elbow. Is that too much, Kristen? No. Okay. Do you want more? Okay. okay, so from here, I've kind of grabbed skin. I'm going to do the following. Do you mean to shear like up a little bit or down? Uh, maybe up. Up a little bit? Tell me when. And there we go. No more pressure than that? No there we go. Really, really good neck work. The other thing is this is almost completely effortless to deliver. The only thing I can think of where you wouldn't do this is somebody had a freck, a fresh neck surgery of some sort, not a freck, <laughs> a fresh neck surgery. Somebody has herniated discs, bulges, something like that. That's causing excruciating pain. They need to see a professional, either a doctor or a therapist to be able to work on some soft tissue. But otherwise, I think this is safe for the general population. If you had somebody who had osteoporosis, eh. Not, not so much, right? It's a deep compression. So I'm going to lean in just a little bit more. Is that too much? Or right there. There we go. Usually I can hit about three spaces or three spots, kind of the base of the neck, the middle of the neck, and then the upper portion. I can usually on somebody's neck, depending on its length, hit like three different spots. But I'm just stacking body weight to be able to lean in right here. Totally just hanging out, right? totally easy, totally calm. I can start to vary just a little bit. I could go cheer that way. I could cheer this way. I could cheer up. I could cheer down. And in her case, just a little bit up. How's that? Okay. okay. Do you want more to the front? More to the back? More to the back. More to the back. One of the things about the communication that's so good is she doesn't have to wonder if I'm going to hit the spot because she's telling me once she's trained, she goes right into that spot. Don't feel like you're uh, hurting their massage by talking to them verbally. We're trying to get feedback about pressure. Yeah. General to specific, superficial to deep. 
you start with a broad tool. Now, I'm generally more on my ulna, kind of a big, broad forearm. What would happen if I put a pointy elbow out? Right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. And from here, I'm going to lift. I'm going to come up and then put my forearm just a little bit higher. Right. More towards the suboccipitals. More towards the base. Still in the posterior. But I'm definitely more at the base of the skull. Getting towards the suboccipitals. What do you think? A little bit up? Uh, yeah. Okay, a little more to the front, a little more to the back. What do you think there? Then a little up. She gives thumbs up. This is the universal sign of please continue. Feel free to breathe, meditate, zone out, think about the future of our world and our species and whether we're going to go out into the Milky Way. Kristen's dead. She has no idea what I'm saying. I heard you. <laughs> it's hard to stay awake in this stuff. <laughs> I'm like, stop doing that. So, <laughs> it, so well, one of the things I think is interesting is I, I just started, I was talking to Chad about this. It's like, is it relaxing? Yes. Because I, I never focus on it in my marketing. Yeah. No, it's so relaxing. I can't stay awake. Yeah. You're just like, like, like we train all the time. And yeah, she, I always I'm like, fall asleep. Kristen, wait, wait. I'm trying, I know. To, I'm trying to teach here. I'm I trying to get some feedback. I got sugar before I came. <laughs> I was like, do not fall asleep. And I'm like, flip, I'm, I'm flip, flip to the other side for me. So we're going to repeat. We're going to repeat the same thing on the opposite side. This is, uh, again, us just opening up the upper back, opening up the neck. This is like the preparation for the uh, deeper work that we're going to do, that compression. And I want to make sure you get her hair out of the way. So don't step on it. You got cup marks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> I've been trying to maintain. So again, right next to her, right? Going to grab right around the shoulder here. Good grip there. So I can lean back and over this stuff is interesting to me because it looks super simple like i think this isn't very flashy for tv no, so to speak it's not but how's it feel so good ding 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 so we good. we have a winner <laughs> oh, too, guys. That was oh my shoulder feels better yeah I felt that. So what I was doing here is like I was kind of moving my shoulder blades while I was opening up her chest, right? So if I just slouch all day, it makes my spine feel cramped. What I, would, what I was doing was using her as a weight. So I was like leaning back and kind of stretching my own neck, stretching through my own chest, moving my own body. Hey, this is my session. We both get a stretch in this. No, she thinks I'm working on her. What we do is we trick the receiver into working on us. <laughs> Right through there. Oh, yeah. So from here, it's like I'll, again, trying to get her to give me her shoulder blade just so I can make this free and move. Again, when I'm, when I'm leaning back, we're primarily hitting, I think, levator scapula and the trapezius. If I roll back, I'm getting a little bit more of pectoralis major and minor, but I want to be able to open that stuff up, which means pulling 
that shoulder blade down to lengthen levator scapula and trapezius. Though it's a very simple move, this just feels super, super nice. It's uh, deep, but it's usually not like overwhelming to the receiver. Some of the compressions can, can be a bit much, especially if you're heavy handed in the beginning. So I think I've, I've opened the bulk of this up. I wanna bring her head just a little bit further forward. Again, I just wanna create that little bit of length back here. If she has her head back, it feels like there's not as much space for me to lean down with my forearm or elbow. So I'm gonna go ahead and come up, kind of change my position, because I wanna be able to kind of hook right here and get towards the base of the neck. And again, I've got this receptive palm under my thigh so that I can, we think Kristen in there. Okay. So a little bit up or down a little bit lower. Okay. Now posterior, there we go. Now I wouldn't have thought that was the direction she wanted me to go. But when I give her the option, do you see how it changes the nature of the session? She's able to choose. So instead of me kind of wondering if I'm going to the good spot, she just tells me oh, oh, right there. When she's well trained, here's what she'll do. She'll take her arm and go, put your elbow. She's like, right, right there. <laughs> she almost moves me into position. I want you to understand that as we're teaching, I want you to feel like you can communicate and actually have the person go right to the area that you need help with. The communication helps the session. Right there, Kristen. So when I lean forward, you see where my shoulder is compared to my elbow? The reason why is because I'm trying to do this and like lean almost backwards. I want to be able to lean back so that I can deliver that pressure at the angle that she wanted. I can completely change my body a little lower. What do you think? Or is it better here? Do you see the angle depends on the shoulder to the elbow? If you see me do this with my knees, it's from the hip to the knee. You're looking at that angle to determine how to replicate what we're doing. Right there. He's like, I'm dead. Then I get to, to change things up and make her think that I'm working on her as I ooh, stretch my own arm and peck and oh, right there. Ah, reach to the fingers. Oh, right in there. Then I'm going to lift up, just give her a second. Some of those compressions can be pretty intense. So sometimes I tend to release very slowly instead of just jumping out. And then also give them just a second to kind of like rest before I go in for the, the second pass, which is a little bit more to the middle this time. What do you think there, Kristen? That's too sharp, a little broader, right there. Okay. Now up, right there. So I feel like I'm getting at this upper portion again. And again, even though the, the neck muscles are inordinately complex, you don't need to memorize each of those. It's just to give you an idea of those neck muscles making all those small movements. The ones that I kind of wanted to focus on were the semispinalis capitis and the suboccipitals. As I go more towards the base, do you see how I'm hitting those towards the base of the skull? Right in there. And you do so in a way that allows you to like break dance with the other arm. Yeah. And they don't know, they don't even know what you're doing. They can't see. Yeah. You do the one. Sorry. And Kristen, what do you think? Just a little bit more towards the base right there. Is that too much? Is it too sharp? 
Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it was a little too sharp, a little bit more towards the elbow. I'm gonna change my position just a little bit. How's that? Is that better? A little rough? Okay, is it too much pressure? Okay, how's that? Better. There we go. Now up or down? Up. All right, pressure's okay? Yeah. And this is the sort of stuff you have to check on. I've done this 9 million times. She wants just a little lighter pressure up here for whatever reason. Doesn't matter to me. It actually makes her session better when she's able to guide through the session. easier now that was almost imperceptible on camera and all i did was i had my body a little further this way and i just leaned back just a little bit it's just to take pressure off of this flow into her neck right here she wanted just a little bit less doesn't matter to me doesn't seem stressful it's easy to deliver when your partner's like, oh, will you rub my neck? Why are you going to use this? Ow. Ow. Why are you spending all these Ow. fingers? No, not a good tool. Forearms, big forearms. And as I slowly back off, I'm going to go ahead and have Kristen lay on her back. I'm going to take this pillow out for the time being. We're going to move that guy. Okay. I'm going to grab a, a blanket for me so I can kind of extend my uh, mat so I feel like I'm sitting at nearly the same level she is. I want to be able to lengthen and kind of pull through the neck here. It's going to be interesting. Oh, you look towards you? Do, do, do. No, I got it. Okay. <sighs> so, I thought that was my watch making noises. Oh. One, I lift and kind of pull the hair out of the way. You want to grab individual strands. Ow. So I want to scoop with a couple of fingertips on this left side and just strip, slide up and over the neck to the base of the skull there. Just rotating hand to hand. See if you can see it from this angle. Going to scoop this time with the right hand. Couple of fingers right there. Sliding along with some lift. It's also this movement, this head uh, side to side, getting a little bit of length on the neck itself, hooking the fingers. If, if you find that the person, uh, I get clients like this, the, you ever have, find, have, just have a big head? Just heavy? It's like a big boulder? Yes. So you can use both hands, then you can just lift, right? You don't have to worry as much about the stripping. You might just be holding and then gently mobilizing. Another thing is I want to keep uh, an eye on their facial expressions because I want to see if they're having any response to what I'm doing. If I notice that they wince, I'm going to back off or ask them for feedback. I'm going to lift and strip there again. Put this back down. I'm going to lift and strip there again. And Bring her over to the side, bring her over again. And then finally, I'm going to turn the head just gently in a way that she feels is uh, comfortable, like with her range of motion. And then what I want to do here is I'm going to reach the left hand over and I'm going to pull and lengthen. There's a little bit of slide here. I'm just allowing some traction and length through the neck. And once I get a little bit of their kind of end range, a little bit of end range of motion, now I'm going to press down into the shoulder and start to open those 
areas of the upper back and neck again. And I'm gonna bring her back to neutral and then slowly help her rotate to the opposite side. This time I'm gonna reach over with the right hand and I'm gonna mix it up. I'm gonna do a little bit of both. She's dead. She I'm gave the universal hand away. gesture of I'm dead. <laughs> that, that hand signal was I'm here, text me, but I won't be answering your call because I'm sleeping. <laughs> so I've got her face and her head generally at like neutral. Here's what I'm gonna do. I want you to watch my hand uh, position on this as I get into the muscles of the face. Complex, but I don't want you, you don't have to worry about one specific muscle. It's just not necessary. You know, what we're going to do is I'm going to take my hands and I'm going to split over the chin. You getting cold? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So I'm going to grab here, but there's going to be a little bit of slide. Even though we haven't applied any oils, I'm just going to hook over the chin and split the hands. I'm going to slowly slide out over and around the cheekbones and then up around the temples moving up towards the temporalis. You can kind of drag the fingers along with, just as long as you're not pressing towards their eyes. Low and slow. Then I can split right over the forehead. Is that too much, Kristen? No. Okay. She had just a little shift. I was just making sure everything was okay. I was like... <laughs> oh, started to snore? No, I was just supposed to split. <laughs> Bye -bye. I'll wait to act like I'm no, and then I'm going to put my hands directly back on the forehead, but I'm going to gently split across the forehead, go out over the tops of the eyebrows, and then start to come out around the temples. I'm going to curl my fingers in. Down over the temples. It's really some length to temporalis there. And then I'm going to hook my fingers around the ears. If you find like an earring, just try to work around the earring. This isn't super uh, hard. This is a very broad finger. It's not very sharp, sharp, it's very broad. If I want, I can split the fingers from the thumbs and the fingertips just under the nose and over the cheeks. Can do another pass over the nose with the thumbs. I can go over the eyebrows. Tons of options here. Feel free to uh, play with these. It's very, very simple, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift her head here and I'm going to bring it just a little bit to the left and into my hand so that I can move her around. I want to be able to reach with the live long and prosper. Thank you, Ospak. Nanu, nanu. So you're going to be able to hook around the ear, and this way you're going to be able to hook right into that temporalis. I'm going to show that here in just a second because we're able to work right into the scalp, right into the temporalis. As I'm going in there, I'm trying to grab the tissues of that muscle and work that around the jaw and around the neck. Now, as I'm working here, you can see that hand split over the ear. I can also bring the fingers behind and start to work the posterior of the scalp at the back. Super, super relaxing. Oh yeah. Then I'm going to bring her right back to neutral, pulling the hair out of the way so I don't grab any strands and like pull it out. Then I'm going to rotate her head to the opposite direction. Again, this right hand is going to get a good grip. I'm going to be able to reach in now with the left hand. Nanu, nanu, live long and prosper. Right in there, right over the ear, right into temporalis. Right through there. 
just a little bit of musculoskeletal anatomy helps. I'm going to pull my hand out on this side so I could show that. Again, just that little bit of knowledge of that location. Very, very important. I feel like Kristen has just a little bit more tension right on this side. So what I'm going to do is, Kristen, I'm going to continue to work right in here. Can you yawn for me? Kristen is dead. I'm not with Jess. <laughs> yawn for me? I can't stay awake. Bye. Yawn for me? Ah. Now, when she yawns in that big open mouth, it lengthens the fibers of the temporalis. It's a way of getting some active mobilization. If you have people that have like temporomandibular joint dysfunction or some sort of issue, that can feel just amazing to them. I'm going to put my hand back underneath. And this is so I have a little bit of movement here so I can reach behind and get the base of the skull along with all of the muscles over the scalp. And then pulling the hair up. This is something that I love in particular. I'm going to show you guys this. I'm going to pull the hair up and over. And then I want to be able to grab all of the hair. Okay, I'm going to slowly do this kind of in a balanced way over the top of the scalp. I'm not trying to pull individual strands because that'll definitely hurt. Okay, but I'm trying to get a good grip here. And then I'm going to twist and twist and twist and get some snug and twist and twist and twist and then slowly i'm going to traction and just lean back because it's all the hair not just individual strands and i twisted this way the first time the second time i'm going to do it the opposite direction back to the center and twist and twist and twist and twist And right there. Dismount. Perfect 10. You dead, Kristen? Yeah, I could just stay here. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> She's like, I'm dead. I don't know if you guys fell asleep, but I certainly had so much trouble. <laughs> so we're going to take a, a quick bathroom break. Just feel free to go ahead and, you know, switch out partners, take a bathroom break, get a drink of water. We'll be back in just a minute, guys. Oh, wrong camera. Hello. There we are. Of course. I got the cameras down now. Sorry, y'all. Still asleep. So at this time, let's go ahead and switch positions or switch places. Let's get our receiver in on their side and get their hips supported with either a pillow or a blanket. been a while since I've had so much trouble staying awake, but <laughs> that was surely a challenge today, my friends. All righty. So just like we did in the first round, we want to go ahead and get right behind our partner. If you are, if the pillow is in your way, just move it forward. That way that you have space. Oh yeah, I'm great. So we're going to go up with our handle, grab through, and we're just going to lean back. 
just to review, since all of you were that are now giving were receiving, we are going to go ahead and refer to just a little bit of anatomy so you can see what it is that we are working with, stretching out. Oh man, me and this camera is, I'm going to get it down, people. I'm going to get like, it done. Look at my hair. <laughs> yeah, I just got my hair done. I wanted to show you how great she did. No, no, and we get them to sponsor it and then we run a banner at it. But I'm going to, it's like for your, your salon there. There you go. They sponsor I think the Time Size Jam, yes. Kim will appreciate right it. Right below the Time Size Jam logo, we put a logo for Coke, and then on the other corner is Bank of America. That there you great. go. <laughs> then we're set. <laughs> So low and slow, guys. Big oh, so lean good. back. It's always that left side I have problems with. Yeah. Let's see. Give yeah. you different angles so you can see how I'm just leaning back. If your hands feel like they're slipping, you could just be sneaky and just kind of move them back into place, lean back. Also, I'm, I'm big about not stretching out shirts, so kind of, you know, be aware. <laughs> For some reason, I always wear my favorite shirts when I'm giving <laughs> and receiving. I'm like, don't stretch. I can't be the only one like that, right? All right, so when you feel like we're nice and warm, then go ahead and flip around. Bear with me, because I was totally napping during this. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and we're going to shoot for some of these muscles in the neck. I'm going to go ahead and flip to just really quick. We're going to get into the posterior part of the neck. So make sure we are staying behind the sternocleidomastoid here. On the back side of the neck, we don't want to put any pressure towards the front of the neck. And we're going to go with the flat part of our elbow, okay? How's that pressure there? Good. Oh, here we go. Not this one. Here we go, a little closer. I always check in with pressure. This is an area that can be very tender. A lot of us have very tight necks from our jobs. A lot of us work at computers. But even in my work, my neck gets tight. Kind of come out. <laughs> and Robert likes to, you know, Robert said he likes to sit on his. I, for some reason, I always sit with my feet kind of like this. But depending on what's going on in your lower back, sometimes you might have a very tight low back. And you might have to kind of make an adjustment for what feels best for your body in that moment. So feel free to sit the way that you feel comfortable sitting. I think that the reason that I sit that way uh -huh. is because my torso is longer. Oh, yeah. I don't have that problem. And that's the thing. Low to the ground. You turn your legs to get your body, body closer. Tied, yeah. So you can sink back. Yes. That's what it is. And so the same thing, though. You can use the arm to kind of pull back. And... Sink in. Better angle here. You can also do a little shearing. Like a little more towards the back. Okay. That is a yes. <laughs> Sign language for me. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Did you flip around and work the opposite direction? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I kind of sit here for a little bit, you know, depending on what we have going on, it takes a minute for the body to release. It's not just like, whoop, go, oh, letting go. And also a lot of people, you know, you haven't, I've received massages before where I'm like, my neck, I need a lot of work. And it's like the same, just traction. So especially when people have never gotten worked on their sides, 
They really appreciate the attention and the pressure that this move gives them. I'm gonna go ahead and slowly move out. I like to slowly sink in and slowly move out. I'm not really big on quick movements. The body tends to react and um, spring back. So he's kind of moved forward. So I'm kind of opening him back. I'm gonna do the same thing Robert did. I'm gonna give myself a blanket on the back so that I'm on the same level as I'm working. So I'm just gonna fold one of these yoga blankets, which are the best tool in my opinion for this work because you can fold them, use them as props, use them to prop yourself. So I'm gonna pull Robert back and I'm gonna sink in. Getting length as I'm sinking in. I'm crossing over many muscles as I'm doing this. It looks very simple, but it's very effective. Here we're hitting your scalings, your levator, some trap. I mean, there's just many muscles that we're getting to work on at the same time with this move. I also take this time as a, this hand's here, right? Kind of working his delt, giving a little movement here, sinking in. How's that pressure, Robert? Good? All right. He approves. I find that when I'm receiving, I really enjoy to have some pressure here with my left hand. When I'm receiving, I like, I like everything to be lengthened as the pressure is being applied to my neck. You can feel the difference. How does that feel, Robert, without the, you like it without it being lengthened? Or do you prefer this? I'm trying to settle into both so I can see. Yeah. I prefer that. Yeah. It's very slight, but it, there is a difference when you're receiving that you can notice. All right. So we can go ahead and flip to the other side. I need a spatula. <laughs> Wipe off the slobber, get switched to the other side. Can I drool? Just a little drool, it's okay. <laughs> All right, so once again, we get up against our receiver's body, nice and close so that they feel our connection here. He feels safe. He's not going to fall backwards. I'm here to support him. Let's see where we at. I'm going to loop my arm in, grab here on his top of his shoulder. I like to interlock my fingers for a nice grip and just lean back. My hands kind of slid a little bit, but it doesn't matter. It's fine. He doesn't care. He's into the nice opening of the shoulder. There we go. Uh, 
open, lean back. Let's do, here we go. Nice and soft in these guys. And lean back. Just as Robert said, I, I totally work myself as I'm working on my client, stretching my neck out. I've been in a couple car accidents that the trauma has never really left. So there's always a great time to give yourself a little more stretch. Get some movement. You can change the angle a little bit. A little mobilization. Line his arm back on his side. Go ahead and flip the opposite direction. I'm gonna switch up and do it this direction first. Lengthening the arm. or pressing the arm to lengthen the neck. And sink in. How's the pressure? Good? All right. I swear I got seven hours of sleep last night and still this put me right to sleep. I'll lengthen. I like to reposition my elbow a little bit and sink in. I've been doing a lot of TMJ sessions lately. People are coming back around for that, that style of work. And I always include these moves when I'm doing my TMJ work. All right, now I need to flip around and I don't, I, I don't know if other people do this, but I, I do these weird things where I just kind of like rotate, right? That's my whole, I just move around pretty quickly and swiveling on my knees. So once again, I sit with my legs behind me. Robert sits with his legs here. Let me see how about that. I'm gonna try to do it Robert's, Robert's way. He's right, I'm short. I like to be above. So I like to prop myself up. Let me switch angles. Here we go. So I'm just gonna sink in behind his SCM. That pressure, Robert. I always work on that left side. Sometimes naturally, my elbow just will start to kind of slide. I just allow it. it feels really great.
Robert, is the sliding okay for you? Okay. For some clients, if uh, they have a lot of tension in their neck, um, they may not be ready for that, but I don't ever try to force it. It's only when there's a natural glide. So I'm going to kind of stay here and finish this glide before I switch to work on his neck some more. I'm going to come back in since my elbow was sliding and just sink in. I know Robert has a lot of tension here and is enjoying this work. You can't see it on the camera. My my elbow has slid, it feels like a significant amount of distance for me. But on camera, you can't really tell too much. One more pass. Starting just behind the SCM, I'll show you one more time where that SCM is. Right here on the left side, the photo. A different view here so you can see it. By this point, I fear you guys have mastered this. Your receiver is hopefully drooling or asleep. Sometimes I just like to give a little length. Sometimes maybe you can get a little opening. We're just squishing around. It's nice to give a little length. Woo! Had a natural adjustment there. I'm sorry guys, I know I'm throwing this in halfway on the body, just such a delicious thing to have after you've been getting squished on is to have a little opening. You can even come down and pull the arm a little bit to give that space. All right, Robert, let's go ahead and go face up. Take this out of your way. Take this. Ooh, the hair is out. If your client has a bun, you may have to take their hair down. It becomes a little uncomfortable or maybe to shift the bun up or down so that your receiver is not un unstable trying to balance on a hair bun. So I did the, the little 
blanket, I folded it up so that I would have a little support here. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna move some of his hair out of the way. And just slowly pull his neck. Right now we're working the semispinalis capitis, the suboccipitals. There we go. I'm going side to side. There we go, it's a better view to see. And I'm pulling. So I'm dragging my fingers across from one side, up to the top where your occipitals are, reaching across, dragging up to the top. You can bring both of your hands underneath. Pull them at the same time in traction. The movement I'm doing with my hands underneath his neck, it's traction and I hold. It's really nice when you have a tight neck. Just get those suboccipitals. When I'm doing my TMJ work, I like to do these moves. This is exactly uh, some of the work that I do. I come in, I work, let me see where we're at here. You can see the muscles of the, we're working here, the temporalis. If someone's dealing with a lot of TMJ pain, they may not be able to handle as much pressure, but they will let you know, check in. Let's do some little circles. Let's see. I like to do a second sweep a little higher. The great thing about Thai massage is now that I'm not using my hands constantly over and over in sessions, I'm using the rest of my body. So then when it comes time to do detail work, my hands are fresh, I'm ready to go. And open. I kind of slept through this part. Did you did you do a lot of face work? Yeah, okay, good. A little bit. I was asleep, but this is what I do. <laughs> Follow it around. I like to work right above the ears. Little circles right above the ears. Most people have the misunderstanding about TMJ that it's just locked jaw or TMJ is any imbalance. So chewing gum all the time, smoking cigarettes, leaning on your hands, car accident imbalance, all sorts of things, clenching, they all cause issues in these muscles. So I'll skip over to the the muscles of the face really quick. So we have a quick little review. You can kind of see how we're spreading open the muscles, right? So spreading open the muscles in his forehead. I have to come with my pinkies side down first. 
trace along the cheekbones. Be aware of the pressure you're using. Robert and I both have a history of car accidents and that stuff just doesn't go away. It kind of lingers. But I know that with all this mask wearing we've been doing and we're kind of picking back up in, I know for me, at least in the beginning when I was wearing a poor fitting mask, or even when some people are double masking and trying to adjust the masks with their face, we create tension in our jaw and our face. I like to just sink in right here below the cheekbones and open, slide down. And we're keeping it a little general here, but I know that these, these moves and these tools we've given you today will be really great in helping you with working with your partner, your loved one, your friends. Be like, hey, I can rub your head for you. You got a headache? Yeah. Can do some slight ear pulling. It's crazy how our scalps, all the muscles get a little tight. Just be gentle. And I'm going to finish with just one more sweep under the neck. Can even finish the little neck stretch because we're here. Why not, right? A little stretch to say goodbye. Working within the limits of our receiver, meeting them where they are at, never pushing them past the point where they feel comfortable working, okay? Slow moving in, slow moving out. This is a nice stretch to hold for a couple of seconds. I went just a little over time because we had that bathroom break. So I wanted to make sure we got two full 30 minute trades. I didn't want the second partner to get shafted five minutes. <laughs> hey, I'm all about receiving. That's what we're here for, right? We all want to receive, learn how to do a little massage. Well, guys, thank you so much. We're so happy you came today and joined with us in the Thai Jam. I look forward to this every two weeks to come meet with you guys and do a little work. I'm always interested to hear where you're tuning in from, whether you're replaying, whether you're watching live, if you want to hit the comments just so I can kind of see what you guys are up to. I'd love that. If you have any feedback of things you'd like to see in the future, feel free to shoot us some ideas of things you're interested in. We'd love to have some inspiration from you. Cool, and thank you guys again so much. We'll see you again soon. I'll go ahead and announce through Facebook. There's a Facebook page for the Time Massage Jam. You can follow us there. Also, feel free to follow Kristen or I on social media just to keep in touch. Yeah. We're gonna continue doing these regularly. We really want you to participate live. If you can get friends, family together that you feel safe working with, it's easy to replicate what we're doing safely. Mm -hmm. And I really relish any comments or feedback. If you have questions, feel free to contact us. Thanks so much again for uh, coming out. And I'll see you again soon at the next time. Massage Jam. See you soon, guys.